All right, welcome to TriMet 101. Today, I want to talk about metros again. I always think it's interesting to hear other people's point of view on how Max could expand in the future. But one thing is often in common with almost everyone's ideas. Sink the trains. There should be no surface tracks in downtown Portland that's carrying a light rail system. It's just not very efficient. At least not as efficient as it could be if it were in a tunnel or even on an elevated guideway, which good luck doing that in downtown Portland. The existing trains go too slow through downtown and the city blocks are just not long enough to accommodate longer trains. It's quite constricting. So with that in mind, I present you my ideas for metroifying the MAC system. Firstly, everything would be grade separated. These would be gone. These would also be gone. These are great for streetcars, but not so great for having a highly efficient and high capacity metro system. It also can be much more disruptive to other traffic. Now before you start saying, wow, that sounds pretty car oriented, we're building a transit project here. Well, it's disruptive for all traffic, including other buses, people walking, biking, emergency vehicles. It's disruptive to everybody. If gate arms are going down every 60 seconds, how is that ambulance going to get from end to end? This is problematic. So you have sort of three options, and you can intermix these however much you want. You can either build elevated, which looks kind of ugly, but can save lots of money. You can bury them underground, where it's almost just flat out forgotten about, and the trains can just run at their maximum efficiency with the least amount of impact, except for construction and money. Or you can build just a railway with still, you know, surface tracks along a railway, but where the intersections are, build those as either overcrossings or undercrossings. High frequency would be a high priority. 15 minute frequency is not acceptable for a metro. It's not really acceptable for light rail either, but whatever. Because the line would be fully grade separated, you could buy brand new vehicles just like the ones in Vancouver, Canada on the SkyTrain. You could then automate the system, again because it's all grade separated, and you could run the trains with truly mind-boggling frequency. Realistically, you would never need it any worse than every six minutes. Train length would also be upwards of four to six cars rather than two. Automated trains require no operators, and so the existing MAX operators could just move back to bus or could go on to an expanded streetcar system. Potentially a streetcar system with much higher frequency and with highly expanded routes. We could really have an amazing system on our hands. Portland has lots of surface tracks that are already in use by MAX that could easily be converted into a future streetcar line. So there's definitely room for expansion of the streetcar. Last thing I'll talk about before I start talking about the train lines are the stations themselves. Basically all stations that are not right in the heart of downtown Portland would get a small building. You'd enter the building and you'd find ticket machines and fare gates. Tap your hop card on the fare gates, they open up and you're led into the station. Once inside the fare gates, you'll find stairs, escalators, and elevators that will take you down or up to platform level. Another hugely important piece of the puzzle is what you would do at the subway station buildings. You should be able to easily catch buses from here. Before the fare gates, there should be some sort of exit on one side where there would be a bus loop that you could catch multiple types of buses at every single station. I'm going to make a video later in the future talking about transit integration and integrating bus with train stations and how that should work. But in general, yeah, every train station should pretty much have bus connections added. Toronto in Canada is a pretty good example of this. Seriously, go on Google, turn on the transit layer on Google Maps, 
and go look at the line too. It's a green line on the map. And just look at the stations on there and notice how the buses will loop around the station buildings that go to the subways. That is kind of what I'm talking about here. And that's a huge preview for a future video that I will be making in probably a couple months. So as a result, transit centers wouldn't really need to be a thing because every station kind of would be some sort of transit center. Although there would still be some major ones and there would still be a few that would always just kind of be served by buses. So the name transit center would still likely linger on for quite a while. Now this is also going to get its own video later, but transit-oriented development would also be a key step in making stations a very lively place to live. And not just a five-story mixed-use building, a 15 or 20-story tower. That would be highly, highly useful. It might be time to look into some zoning laws. Again, that is going to get its own video later, so I'm, we're just going to briefly touch on that topic and move on. Okay, now on to the lines. It might be a good idea to keep a second tab open with Google Maps with the transit layer turned on so that you can follow where I'm talking about. Alright, so you've probably noticed I just blacked the screen. No, this is not an ad or a sponsorship. I just kind of forgot to introduce this because I didn't really have this all figured out yet. I decided to go and make a map on MS Paint <laughs> and it more or less shows exactly what I'm going to be talking about throughout this video. So I'm going to give you an overview of what the whole map looks like right now. So there you go. You can pause if you want to look at it in great detail, but I will be covering all sections of this map in detail. So this might also help if you have a Google tab open nearby and would like to check out where the stations would be. Let's talk about the west side blue line. Well, much of this would pretty much be underground or kind of as is today, just with the tracks possibly sunk lower. All stations would be similar in locations to today's system, but downtown Hillsboro would definitely get less stations. The corridor continues off to Forest Grove, which right now, that freight track is abandoned, so that is a great opportunity to extend Max out to Forest Grove. Right now there's a project called the Council Creek Trail that plans to rip up the old trackway here and turn it into a walking and biking path, which I both do and don't agree with, but let's say you buried this section of track underneath here, which could become problematic at places like Dairy Creek, but let's assume we get those issues figured out. You could still have a path for biking and walking right above the tunneled trackway. Also, due to its proximity with the Hillsboro Transit Center, Hatfield would be removed and additional stations would pop up all the way to the very end in Forest Grove. TriMet could then easily expand and form a sort of grid in downtown Cornelius and downtown Forest Grove, especially as the areas would definitely continue to grow thanks to major transit projects happening in the area if this metro line were to be constructed, and other development sites that would happen along the way. So let's black out the screen now and take a look at the list of stations. The West Hillsboro station would be just east of Dairy Creek itself, and it'd be kind of near Winco and that Sun West Shopping Center. And the yards, plural, would be located at El Monica, where the existing yard would be, and a possible new yard in the West Hillsboro area that's quite undeveloped currently. Blue Line Downtown, that's the next section we'll be talking about. Well, more or less all of downtown would be fully underground for all light rail lines. I've talked about it in a recent video on whether Portland needs a metro or not, but you really shouldn't be seeing the max on the surface streets at all, and my metro system would definitely fix that. You'd see people, you'd see bikes, buses, streetcars, ideally a lot less cars, but that's a topic for a future video, but you won't see the max. So just like today, the blue and red line trains would run together from Fair Complex, Hillsboro Airport, 
until Goose Hollow only, and then the red line would break away using flyover and fly under tracks, that way they're pretty much entirely separated from the blue line, and so after Goose Hollow, blue line does one thing, red line does something else. So I'm going to show you stations for all of that. And black the screen. So the City Hall station would be located at 6th and Madison, Pioneer Courthouse would be 6th and Yamhill, and then Union Station would be at Irving and 5th. And then the Rose Quarter station would be underneath Multnomah and 1st, and the Lloyd District station would be underneath Multnomah between Grand and 7th, with a tunnel leading directly to the southwest entrance to the Lloyd Center Mall. And I'm back. But let's black the screen again and take a look at the red line stations. Well, you still have the same Goose Hollow station, but then it breaks away and serves Providence Park, which would be at underneath Yamhill and 17th. It travels down Yamhill and serves the same Pioneer Courthouse. So at Pioneer Courthouse, it would join back up again with the blue line trains. And then it would serve the same Union Station, Rose Quarter, and Lloyd District. Now, there is a potential yard location here, and it would pretty much be underneath Holiday Park and where the Regal Theater is right next door. But don't worry, you wouldn't be destroying any of this. This would be a fully underground train yard, which is absolutely possible. If you study the Montreal subway, it has an underground train yard. And that way you're not disturbing anything through the more dense areas of Portland. Let's talk about the Blue Line some more. <laughs> And we'll talk about the east side segment, so basically everything all the way to Gresham. About half of this would remain the same as we see it today, and a whole bunch more of it would be placed underground. The segment along I-84 would remain largely unchanged to what we see today. We've already got pretty decent grade separation throughout the whole Banfield segment, but at Northeast 16th Drive would be around the approximate entrance and exit to this new tunnel underneath the Lloyd District, so there would have to be some rearranging of tracks. The Gateway Station would be moved underground with a huge bus loop located on the surface. The entire Burnside section of the alignment would be placed underground. And then at Ruby Junction, lots of construction would need to happen. There would be a new exit of tunnels here to actually take trains into the yard, and there'd be a completely reconstructed area with new sidewalks and reconfigured roadways at 200 Second Avenue. Between Ruby Junction and Gresham City Hall, not a whole lot would change as a lot of this is already grade separated. But the Civic Drive Station might have to be kind of reconfigured because there is an at-grade intersection there. So either Civic Drive would have to be built elevated, which would probably kind of destroy the look of Civic Drive today. Or you could sink the tracks further to have the road still sort of function as an overcrossing. It's possible that service to Civic Drive could be completely eliminated due to its proximity with Gresham City Hall, but I don't know if I'd recommend that because of how the Civic Drive station has transformed over the last few years. Anything east of Gresham City Hall would be elevated. And that's pretty much that. A possible future extension to Troutdale Airport, or even as far as Camas, Washington, could be made pretty easily after Cleveland Avenue by taking a northbound turn onto Kane and 257th, serving a station under Troutdale Airport, and then becoming elevated, going over the Columbia River and into Camas and dipping below 3rd Avenue. So let's go ahead and black the screen again and take a look at the stations. So it looks pretty similar, but there are actually a couple less stations. You'll notice 172nd Avenue is gone, and the Rockwood Station has actually been moved east a little bit to the intersection of Burnside and Stark. The Kane Park, Mount Hood Community College, Cherry Park Road, and Troutdale Airport stations would be a possible future extension to Troutdale Airport, and then Northeast 3rd and Franklin and Northeast 3rd and Joy would be an even future extension into downtown Camas, should that ever become a thing. So the station at Kane Park would be located at Kane and 8th. Mount Hood Community College would be located at Kane and 29th. 
Cherry Park Road would be located at 257th and Cherry Park Road. And then the other stations are fairly obvious where they're located. So the obvious location of the yard would be at Ruby Junction, but there could also be a yard in Troutdale. It would be north of Halsey, where 257th kind of turns east. The tracks here would just continue north, and there's a pretty good yard location that could be constructed here. Now on to Gateway Transit Center, which is kind of a monster of a station, but I have my reasons for designing it this way. Gateway North connects to red and pink line trains, which I'll talk about shortly. The North platform would be served in both directions by only those trains. And then the rest of the trains which serve Gateway would serve the main station, which would be directly under where the buses would loop. You would easily be able to walk between the main Gateway station and the Gateway North platform, just as is currently planned in the Better Red project. Then, blue and green line trains would split south of Gateway Transit Center, just as they currently do, but instead would do so using flyover tracks, as to not be disruptive. The existing setup does not use flyover tracks, and it makes this junction... not a time saver. If trains are late for one reason or another, this junction alone can create kind of domino effects if there are lots of late trains in an area. And when you want such high frequencies, you're going to want flyover tracks that don't cross on the surface of the track. You're going to want them to fly over. Buses would serve a huge loop with two clockwise loops and one large outer counterclockwise loop. Red Line Airport Section. North of Gateway, the Red Line trains would behave exactly as they're going to as part of the Better Red project, except that trains in both directions will use the Gateway North platform. The fish hook would be completely eliminated that turns trains around to get them facing the right way at Gateway. That would be completely eliminated, and again, Red Line trains would use a flyover track to get to Gateway North. So, yeah, that's the only major difference. However, north of Park Rose, trains would dip below surface, not elevated, but below surface, and serve the rest of the stations off to the airport. You don't exactly want elevated guideways with trains on it right near low-flying aircraft. So here is your list of stations. And notice that it uses Gateway North. And also, I'll tell you that there are no potential yard locations in this area. So I said I'd talk about the pink line, so here you go, let's talk about the pink line. The I-205 line. This is a new crosstown line that never enters downtown Portland. It more or less replaces C-Trans Route 65 to Fisher's Landing Transit Center. The general idea is it provides service along the whole I-205 corridor, and allows passengers to get all the way to Clackamas, and all the way up into Washington. It really is a large stretch of I-205. This line would be branched, and the main line would pretty much continue all the way up to Van Mall Transit Center, but there would be a branch that would serve Fisher's Landing Transit Center. At Gateway, this also serves the Gateway North Station, and goes on its dedicated tracks to bypass the main Gateway Station, and eventually joins up with the Green Line tracks that run all the way to Clackamas Town Center. And the Flavel Street station would be completely elevated going over. There would be no more at-grade crossing. So I will now black out the screen. Pretty much everything here is on I-205 except for the Vancouver Mall station. And as you see, it pretty much just goes all the way to Clackamas Town Center without really a ton of things to talk about. However, there would be a branch, and it would be for people coming into Vancouver. There would be, you know, if you're at Vancouver Mall and wanted to get to Fisher's Landing, there wouldn't really be a way to do that. It's possible that operation could change here to where it could kind of come in from both directions, but for now we're just going to assume that northbound trains can either go to Van Mall Transit Center or to Fisher's Landing Transit Center. So the branch stopped, well, it's just one stop at Fisher's Landing Transit Center, located at 164th Avenue and Highway 14. And also, there's really nowhere to easily build a yard for this one either. 
Now onto the green line, a very interesting line. Much of the green line is already pretty well grade separated, so not a ton of construction would need to happen when compared to other lines. Really, the most amount of construction is going to be happening near the Gateway Transit Center. Pink Line trains would branch away from there and bypass the main Gateway Station and serve Gateway North, and the Green Line tracks would also use flyovers to connect with the Blue Line to lead into Gateway Transit Center. I know that is kind of confusing, and there are lots of flyovers, but in general, passenger, this is meant to be easier for the passengers to understand, so even though there's lots of flyovers and whatever, that's not going to matter to the passengers. What matters is that the stations and connections make sense. Then it just travels along the Banfield section until around the Lloyd District, where it would also run along with the Blue and Red Line trains. So, yeah, there's a lot of trains. And then, at the Rose Quarter Transit Center, there would be yet another flyover, and trains would go down a different tunnel than the Blue and Red Lines. So Blue and Red Line trains would use 6th Avenue in downtown Portland, and Green, Orange, and Yellow Line trains would use 5th Avenue in downtown. So yes, they would be right next to each other, and it's like, well, what the heck is the point of that? Well, the Transit Mall, as it currently is, exists on both avenues, northbound and southbound. And so it makes sense to have a tunnel per street, especially since the MAX has five lines which travel through downtown Portland. You probably don't want all of those in the exact same tunnel, because that would be a train like every 20 seconds, and would cause way more delays and way more problems than this solves. Green Line trains would then continue onto the Southwest Corridor alignment, which I will talk about later. Something worth mentioning here as well is that Pink Line trains would end at Clackamas Town Center, but Green Line trains would extend beyond Clackamas. They extend to Oregon City, and also Clackamas Community College. Every other train would extend to Clackamas Community College, whereas the rest of them would end at Oregon City Transit Center. And it would basically go underneath the entire section here, all the way there. And it would use 7th Avenue and Malala Avenue to reach CCC. So again, let's black out the screen and I'll show you the list of stations. So, Southwest Corridor I'll talk about in a little bit, but that would come before this, and then you have stations. So PSU South would be located at 5th and Jackson. PSU Urban Center would be at 5th and Mill. City Hall, which has an underground walkway to the Blue Line Station, so you could just walk directly there, although it would be underneath 5th Avenue. So, again, just a tunnel, basically a tunnel connecting between 5th and 6th. Pioneer Place would also have an underground walkway to the Blue and Red Line. West Old Town would be at 5th and Pine, and then Union Station would have also an underground walkway to the Blue and Red Lines, and this station would be located at 5th and Hoyt. After Clackamas, Clackamas Central would be located at Highway 212. The Beaver Creek Road Station is located at the intersection of Malala and Beaver Creek. And there would be two potential yard locations here, both on the extension to Oregon City and Clackamas Community College. And one of them would be just north of the Gladstone 82nd Drive Station. It would be just east of the freight tracks in a farm right by the river. Also to the southeast of the CCC campus, there's a, quite a bit of land that you could also use to develop and build a train yard in. The Yellow Line. So, much of the Yellow Line would be similar, but it would be mostly entirely elevated. Yellow and Orange Line trains would also become truly separate, as I'll talk about shortly, with the Orange Line being a distinctly separate line from the Yellow. Yellow Line trains would also extend into Vancouver, Washington, serving downtown Vancouver. Now, we'll talk about I-5 service in a little bit when I talk about the Orange Line. 
This is more or less designed to replace C-Tran routes 60 and 105 into Vancouver. Basically, like I said, everything is elevated on the east side of the river, and everything else is kind of underground. As soon as you get into Vancouver, it would dip below the surface right around the waterfront with lots of redevelopment potential, and it would just head underneath the downtown core. The train then enters downtown Portland, also using the 5th Avenue Tunnel, just like the Green Lines did, and then more or less continues like today's Orange Line would, going over a very heavily reconfigured harbor viaduct, because again, lots of that area would kind of probably be uphill to get to the harbor viaduct, and onto the east side. The south waterfront station would also be like an elevated platform over where the buses and streetcars would be, but on Tilikum, the tracks would all connect together. However, the most major difference of the yellow line and the most major new addition here once we get back onto the east side is that this would become the new Powell Max Line. This is a congested corridor and Line 9 deserves way better service than what it's currently getting and so this is going to serve that congested corridor. Once over Tilikum Crossing, the trains would continue to dip below the surface and would serve Omsi and Clinton underground before breaking away from the Orange Line, which I'll talk about later, using more flyover tracks and heading underneath Powell Boulevard. East of Cleveland High School, the tracks would then slowly re-emerge from the tunnel and would become elevated pretty much all the way the rest of the way to Gresham. Now, there would have to be some probably even higher elevated areas because, well, the green and pink line trains would be serving an already elevated corridor near the existing Powell Boulevard station. So the tracks might be really, really, really high. But in general, yes, the trains will extend all the way to Gresham, all elevated. And then at a later date, the trains could be extended to the Mount Hood Community College. So now here is a list of all the stations on the yellow line. It is quite long. So, uh, yeah, it starts in Vancouver, pretty much pretty obvious there, Broadway, Mill Plain. These are all stations that are pretty easy because the street coordinates are basically already in there. Uh, the Vancouver Waterfront Station would be located at Columbia Street and Columbia Way. The Jansen Beach Station would be near the Target, or I suppose it could be right underneath today's Jansen Beach Main Stop, but it would be elevated. Pretty much the rest of the east side there is all just elevated over today's existing yellow line to speed it up. The Lincoln Southwest 3rd Avenue Station would be moved to Lincoln Southwest 1st Avenue. And then on the east side, all the Powell stations are pretty easy to understand, but the Powell Park station would be located at Powell and 26th, which is basically at the Cleveland High School. And then, and then the Mount Hood Community College would be a potential future endpoint. And while there wouldn't be any new yards constructed for this line, you would still just basically be using Ruby Junction. Uh, if you've made it this far into the video, then you deserve a cookie. Uh, let's talk about the Orange Line. In North Portland, this line would more or less become the I-5 line, also going into Vancouver, Washington, but taking a completely different route from the Yellow Line. It would then end up at the 99th Street Transit Center and the Salmon Creek Park and Ride, both of which are located off of I-5. This is more or less fully intended to replace C-Trans 105X, it would skip downtown Vancouver. No Orange Line trains would serve downtown Vancouver. For service there, just take Yellow Line trains instead. It more or less just travels underneath I-5, and as you head south from Vancouver, it's underneath I-5 within Portland, and then it pretty much recombines with the yellow line somewhere around Albina, Mississippi, and then the yellow and orange lines interline all the way through downtown Portland until the Clinton Southeast 12th station. The alignment would then continue underneath 17th Avenue with a new station that's closer to the actual center garage. 
the existing right-of-way all the way up along through the Bybee Boulevard area would be retained exactly as is currently, as it's already grade-separated. The Johnson Creek Max Station would sort of be redesigned to only allow buses to go through the area, and it would remove the at-grade crossing. Then, once you get closer to downtown Milwaukee and you start dealing with all of the intersections, the line would then become elevated and would just go right over everything else. It would go right over Milwaukee, Maine and Park Avenue, and would extend much further into Oregon City, along McLaughlin Boulevard. All of that would be elevated. Once at the Oregon City Station, however, it would combine with Green Line trains, and so, of course, would head underground, and would serve... there would be a flyover to where Green and Orange Lines would run together. So here is a list of all stations. As you see, it ends at Oregon City Transit Center and does not continue to Clackamas Community College. Riders would have to transfer to a Green Line train for service to the college. I suppose during maybe some of the busier parts to the college, busier times of day, some Orange Line trains could continue all the way. But anyways, stations are pretty much where they say they are. Uh, the PCC Cascade West Station would be located underneath Killingsworth Street. And pretty much everything else is fairly easy to understand. Stations at Southeast Park Avenue, Oak Grove, Jennings, those stations are all elevated over McLaughlin Boulevard. And there would be no yard location, at least for now. Alright, so now onto the Southwest Corridor, the next Max Line to hopefully be built sometime in my lifetime. So south of PSU, and beginning onto the Southwest Corridor alignment, the tracks would go underneath 4th Avenue and lead into Barber Boulevard. All stations would remain where they currently do. Gibbs would have to be redone because of the shared transitway. Buses would still likely use the shared transitway, but it wouldn't be shared with light rail. It would just be sort of an express bus-only thing. The entire Barber Corridor would be underground. All of it, including the Barber Transit Center. And then the Hall Boulevard area, the trains would emerge from this tunnel. This general area would be all surface tracks, including where the yard is. That's just all surface tracks. But everything after this point would be elevated. It would end up at Bridgeport Village, but there would be a potential future extension to Sherwood if that were projected to actually be used. Sherwood definitely could be expanding. Sherwood's kind of a boring city, but if there were projections that people would actually ride all the way out to Sherwood, or plenty of areas could be redeveloped, then sure, extend the line to Sherwood. To do this, the tracks would dip below Twalton Sherwood Road, all the way until the Sherwood Plaza. Then, a future extension to downtown Sherwood could be made using Sherwood Boulevard, Pine Street, and 2nd Avenue, similar to the Line 94. So this would be a list of all the stations. So, yeah, kind of a lot, but Tualatin Central, Southwest Teton Avenue, Langer Farms Parkway and Sherwood Plaza would all be another phase of construction to extend to Sherwood Plaza. And then downtown Sherwood Station would be an even further extension. Twalton Central would be located near the West Station underneath Twalton Sherwood Road. I assume there would probably be a new walking path created to make it more obvious that you could transfer to a West train. Then the Sherwood Plaza Station would be located at Pacific Highway and Langer Drive. And then the downtown Sherwood Station would be located at Pine and Second, and it takes Sherwood Boulevard to get to that point. Of course, there would be a yard located at Hall Boulevard, as is in the current Southwest Corridor plan, and there would be another one in the Southwest Teton Avenue area. Alright, last thing, Metro Loops. I'm only going to very briefly talk about this. This will probably get its own video later but it's sort of a way to create a ring line that goes to destinations that are not downtown Portland. It sort of connects suburbs to other suburbs and cities with other cities without entering downtown Portland. It might seem like a weird idea when you first hear it, but there are many, many European cities 
and, well, really just generally worldwide cities that have great success with other ring lines or circumferential or even sometimes orbital routes, as they're also sometimes known. I haven't fully got this figured out in my head yet of how this would work and the exact corridors that this would take, so I might make a separate video on that later. But for now, thank you for watching this movie. This was not meant to be this long. And I thank you for watching.